Wow. That is quite the culture shift. My goodness. So, yeah. And then they have very specific times to eat, you know, in America. You literally eat whenever you want. Things are open. Like, there isn't a, oh, we have lunch from 12 to 3, we're open, and then we open for dinner. It's here, you get hungry, 3, 30, 4 o'clock, good luck, mm -hmm. because you're going to struggle to find somewhere to eat. Yeah. So, working through lunch, and then, like, oh, I'll just grab something after. No, you won't, because... <laughs> It's not happening. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So that was something that uh, took some getting used to. Now, I really, I really enjoy that. And when I go back to the States, like the accessibility of everything gets a little annoying. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you can just do this. Oh, this? Now, now even the way staff, I feel bad saying this because so many people are going to see this. But here, when you order at a restaurant, you know, you have to wave them over. It's like, oh, excuse me, mom. So we play and then they'll come over, take your order, they bring you your food, and then you won't see them again. If right. you need them, you can find them, wave them over, it's fine. Whereas in the States, they're at your table every 25 seconds. Mm. Do you need anything? Can I get you anything? What yeah, do you need? Topping you up your wine. Constantly. Topping up your wine, giving you all the water. Now for me, I'm at home like, oh my God, get away from me. Like, I just want to talk to my friends. And my friends laugh at me. I'm like, oh my God, why is he here again? And they're like, this is how it is. I said, like, oh. Oh, it sounds so like we should all go to fun. Paris just to relax a bit more. Like just, yes. you know, especially with travel. And these past back. several months, well, yeah. when things were quiet, it was nice. Paces yeah. were slow. Yeah. But I do like restaurants being back open because they actually just opened last week. Oh, how nice. Ours are going to open about two dining. weeks. I cannot wait. Okay. I miss yeah. restaurant life. Ugh, so much. But I was tired like... of washing dishes. I was like, <laughs> I can't do this anymore. That's a downside too. <laughs> So let's talk about the the tours that you offer. What what yes. happens on a tour? I'm sh sure you have different types of tours, but tell us about some of your more popular wine tours of Paris. So on a wine tour in Paris, we tour the wine bars because I want to get people to see that part of French life. Mm. Um, while there are restaurants and people go sit down at the restaurant, sometimes you just want a quick hangout with your friends, something like that. And so there are specific places that you can go get a great glass bottle of wine and then like a nice cheese plate meat plate or just some tapa style um food and so uh, depending on what neighborhood i have three different neighborhoods where i go for these tours and we start at a central meetup point and then i just kind of explain to them who i am how i got there what i'm all about and then we go to the first location mm -hmm. i order a sparkling wine for them because people don't drink sparkling wine enough they mm -hmm. think about sparkling wine as oh it's for a special occasion Oh, it's for something festive. I'm like, you're in Paris. This is festive. Enjoy this moment. Celebrate. So, you yes. know, we do the ching. And, um, and then I have a, a map of France of the wine regions. And so I kind of go a little bit through the wine regions, depending on what sparkling wine we have. Okay. It varies because the wine lists here vary. Like I may go to a place one week and then two weeks later, like, oh, yeah, yeah, we changed that list. We have something different. So I'll talk about the region from where that wine is from, whether it's Champagne or Cremant or Blanquette or something like that. I'll talk about the region and then kind of move around the map a bit, give them some ideas of, okay, this region means these grapes. Because if they don't leave my tour with anything else, I want them to know at least one region and what the grapes are. Because that's the biggest, I guess that's the biggest question that I get, or the most asked question, I should say. Okay. Um, if it says Bordeaux on the bottle, what does that mean? Or right. this says uh, Burgundy, what what is that? Yeah. So that's something that I really want people to leave with, to know, okay, in France, it's the region on the label mm -hmm. and not the grape. Right, so, unlike California or a lot of New World countries. They right, lead with and the that's grape. the thing. Yeah. Yep, they lead with the grape until people know the grape. Right. Here, the grape isn't as important. Um, not even the blend isn't is that important. Because that was a question I used to ask when I would go to taste. It's like, oh, what's the blend? And they're like, oh, I don't know. I'm like, didn't you make this? <laughs> <laughs> but to them, the region is important because that is, you know, the soil and the climate and all of that. So that's what's important to them. But to other people, for them to kind of understand what they like and relate it to something that they know, they need to know the grape. Hmm. And so I lead with the grape. Yeah. Then we go to a second location. We'll have another wine. I'll also order some food there. 
we talk a little bit more. Now they're getting a little loose. <laughs> they're asking That's questions. Yeah. They're, um, I let them look at the menu just so they can see how the menu is organized. If there is a menu or sometimes it's a chalkboard that comes over to the table. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I tell them how I select the wines. Um, in one particular location, it's a wine shop in the front and then a wine bar in the back. Okay. So we, you'll get up from the wine bar and then walk through the shop. And then I point out some of the labels and the way things are written on the label, like, okay, this label says IGP, this says AOP, this says, you know, this region, this one has the grape on the front, this is shaped this way, so you know it's red, this mm -hmm. is shaped this way, so it's probably white, right. that kind of thing. And so people like that, and they like going, I pick the places, not necessarily tourist locations, but places that they'll go and they're like, oh, it's all locals in here, places that they wouldn't find necessarily on their own unless they did a whole bunch of research oh, wow. but no need to research yeah they have me. that's well that's what you want is the sort of hidden gems of a, of yes. a city i went on a food and well, it was mostly food walking tour of rome and mm -hmm. i loved it because we would have never found these places you know mm -hmm. the best gelato place the best uh uh matzo buffalo was it uh buffalo mozzarella cheese and yes. went to all these specialty places and smoked prosciutto and whatever it was um but yeah so it, it, do you go to um any i guess uh, do you go to any famous wine bars i guess you're going to offbeat but uh, the one wine bar i heard about in paris is willie's wine bar i don't know if yeah. that still exists or not still exists oh, well i don't know after this year we've had but oh, uh but, yeah you know, i think willie's willie's is definitely still uh there it was there before but yeah willie's is a very popular place i don't go there on a tour just because there aren't that many places to go around it. Okay. I pick a, a wine bar that is kind of close to other ones so we can walk to the other places instead sure. of, oh, let's go to this wine bar. Okay, let's get on the metro and go to this other one. Right. No. Right. It's yeah, like, let's walk, walk to this one, yeah. five minutes, walk to another one. And then if they're still up for it, we'll go to a third location. Okay. If not, we just stay at the second location, get another okay. glass or piche. And sometimes I have to leave them there because they're like, no, we're going to stay. I'm like, All right. <laughs> That's up right. to you. But my time is done. That's great. Thank you for coming out. Yeah. Awesome. And how many people are generally on a tour? I don't take more than six at a time. Oh, how nice. Very intimate. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I keep it very small. Yeah. Just That's because, great. you know, because I want people to be able to talk to each other if they, you know, want to. And also the places I go with them being local kind of insider places you know places in paris aren't that big right so there aren't too many places i can take a group of 10 right or yeah. 15 like yeah. we would take up the whole bar and well that's not as much fun <laughs> do you ever share any tips in terms of ordering from a wine list no matter where you are kind of thing yes um <laughs> the tip i share is the second wine on the list the second cheapest wine that usually has the highest markup uh, so that's not necessarily the deal that right. people think it is yeah. because they expect you to order that one. So if you're thinking of it from a price uh, point ratio, then maybe not the um, second, the second right. cheapest one. And also sometimes that's a wine that they're trying to get rid of. Right. They're trying to uh, sell for whatever reason. So yeah, that's one of my tips that I'll give away. Oh, awesome. <laughs> um, and in Paris, is, are the wine bars mostly focused on French wines or is, do they have a variety of wines? French. French, okay. Mostly focused French, on. French, French. Me, okay. <laughs> when I've done tastings for people and they've been like, oh, if you can, you know, we want to try a little, um, if you can grab an Italian wine and a wine from here, it's hard to find. Like now I know where to go so I can find other um, wines, but sure. there are specialty stores for that. It's not just at the regular neighborhood shop where I can find a wide variety of everything. Right. There are shelves and shelves and shelves of French wine. Huh. Um, okay. And I'm like, oh, well, what about I'm looking for a South African Pinotage? They're like, oh, no, but the other wines are here on this shelf. I'm like, shelf? So all the other wines of the world get a shelf. The oh. rest of the shop is French. <laughs> okay. So they're specialty shops for, um, I know they're Portugal. We have um, Italian shops here, Greek, um, things like that. Mm -hmm. So if I need something else, I have to plan it in advance and think about it so I can order it online. 
But we'll that's go a treat too. Town. We go to go to yes. Paris and really dig down into French wines we Absolutely. can't even get in North America. So Absolutely. That yeah. is a definitely a high point of uh, living here and the wine I have access to. Yeah. A lot of the wines that I studied before or read about, like I can get those here. And also luckily I'm in Paris where I have access to all of the French wines. In some of the other regions, like you just it's very regional. Right. And you just have access to the wines of that particular right. region. So it is so. cosmopolitan in that it draws from all the regions. Do you have yes. a favorite region taste-wise? Or yeah, Bur it's, or probably, it's probably Bur Southern Rome. Southern, Southern Rome. Rome, oh, okay. Yeah, because I, really, I, I really love Grenache. Oh. I really, really like Grenache. And just the flavor of it, it's spicy, but then you also get the berry fruit. It can sometimes be smoky. Yeah. It warms you up from the inside out. It's good in the winter, but then also in the summer with food off the grill. Yes. I mean, you get that fresh hamburger off the grill, you pair it up with the Southern Rome Red. Yeah, nice pairing. And I love the texture of Grenache. It's so like almost liquid velvet. It's so yes. beautiful. It's um, yes. smooth, but not wimpy. <laughs> There yeah. you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but uh, let me backtrack a little bit to when you first moved to Paris. I think it was when you first moved. You had mentioned a, a little story to me ordering in a restaurant when your French wasn't that strong. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what happened? So after this instance, I was like, okay, Tanisha, you at least need to know what these words mean. Okay. okay. So I'm at a restaurant and I'm looking through the menu and I'm like, okay, I know what fish is. Poisson, okay, and chicken is poulet, okay, got it. Didn't see any of those, but then I'm like, oh, on, on andouille, okay, like andouille sausage, like that New Orleans dish. They come like, oh, this is gonna be great. So I order what I think is that, mm -hmm. and so the waiter's like, oh, okay, great, and writes it down, and that, then it comes back, and then this sausage is on my plate, and as it passes me, I'm like, this smells familiar but I don't, it's a strong smell, it's for me, I'm not sure, I cut into it, and then the guy comes and says, oh, how do you like the andouillette? And I was like, andouillette? Well, andouillette is, well, as we call it in the South, chitlins, or pig intestines. Oh, okay. Uh, oh. Shoved into a sausage. So it's in a sausage form. Right. So when I cut it and looked at it, like I was like, oh, I know exactly what this is. <laughs> and everybody else knew what it was because it's a delicacy here. They love it. Oh, okay. Like it is offered at restaurants. It is a fantastic treat for wow. everyone else but me. <laughs> was it because of the what it was mentally or the taste for you? Uh, both. Because oh. I've had chitlins before and I don't like them. Okay. So when I cut it, I was like, oh, I have to eat it because they're all looking at me. <laughs> So I was like, what oh, it, and like, what is it supposed to taste like? Is there a way to compare it to something? If you know, if you know tripe, it's okay. like tripe. If you've ever had tripe in like ramen or anything like that, oh, it's like that. All it's, right. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't sound right. that appetizing. Hopefully you no. had a decent wine to go with it. The wine was good, and then there were also fries next to it. So I ate all the fries. The fries. <laughs> and then went to and then went to McDonald's after. I was oh, like, no. I gotta have something I know. <laughs> the real Paris experience. Right. Because I was <laughs> like, I'm hungry. Like I'm still hungry. So sure. I have to eat. Sure. But yeah. After that, I was like, I'm gonna learn these food words because I yeah. can't make this mistake again. Right. Yeah. Good motivation. Yeah. You'll never yeah. forget that word. The visual. And everything oh, else. Never in my yeah. life. Okay. <laughs> never. Um. And I forgot to ask, like when we are going to a city, whether it's Paris or another city, what are some key things we should look for when we're choosing uh, a tour company or a tour guide to take us around? And we obviously someone who specializes in food and wine, but beyond that, what should we be looking for? Uh, definitely look at the their specialty who the guides are, where they get the guides from. Okay. Is this guide someone that has um, studied wine or studied history or, you know, used to be a chef, something like that, that they're able to speak to things from a more personal point of view instead of just, you know, they're reading it off a car. You go on the tour and they're like, okay, here we are. Um, and this, we have... Uh, uh, um, <laughs> 
this is a cheese from um what is it what does it say right no you want someone that can speak to it and also kind of give you a personal story about maybe a time where they had that cheese or how yes. they learned about cheese Those stories, because you yes. can really feel that yeah, yeah you can really feel that when they have that conversation with you so look at that then also look at where you're going what the neighborhood is um that in some instances may be difficult because you're like oh i'm not that familiar with this neighborhood but just know if someone is taking you like, oh, I'm going to take you on a food tour around the Eiffel Tower. No, they're not. It's <laughs> no, like that's not a thing. Right. So, right. So, so you want to get away from the touristy, overridden touristy places and go somewhere you wouldn't go yourself. Absolutely. Perhaps. Yeah. Absolutely. Because, yeah. Okay, cool. That's great. Great advice. So um, I have to ask you, though, um, I don't know if you saw it, but did, <laughs> did you see the movie Emily in Paris? I didn't. Oh, you didn't? Okay. That's okay. <laughs> so that. you don't have to pass judgment on that. But do you have some favorite movies? Emily in Paris, by the way, for anyone who's listening, is on Netflix. And um, reviews of it said it hit every French stereotype. Um, but uh, yeah. it was also just sort of brain candy for others who liked it. But anyway, what are your favorite uh, movies about Paris or TV shows? Do you have any? Oh, I'm trying to think. What have I? And this is an old one. Amelie was super cute. I really like that. Amelie. Um, oh, yes. Amelie. Yeah, yeah that, that one was cool. cute. And actually, on one of my tours, we walked past the bar where she worked in the movie. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's in I the, like um, that's that in the 18th. Too. So, yeah, so you yeah. can um, see that. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what other TV shows I've seen about Paris. There's not too many. Of, a long time ago, maybe. Yeah, because yeah. I'm thinking it's not too many that I'm watching about Paris necessarily, okay. but like a lot of things that are French because I'm, you know, trying to get the language part. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. probably thinking there's something with uh, Audrey Hepburn or something. Um, I remember that one where, oh, well, that was My Fair Lady. I don't know if that was in Paris. I think it was. And they sang The, the, the Night They Invented Champagne. I love that song. <laughs> so she had to learn how to taste like a lady. Anyway. Um, there was And there was a scene in, was it Something's Got to Give with Diane oh, Keaton, maybe? Okay. Where they were at dinner in Paris, but it was... Ah. It, that might not be the right movie, but they mm -hmm. had dinner in Paris. And so I liked those scenes because that was a real. And it's funny because what they ordered at the restaurant at that time did not exist, really. It wasn't on the oh. menu. Oh. So people would go visit the restaurant after and be like, oh, I want this dish. And they're like, no, we don't have that. Right. Well, they eventually changed it and sure. then they started serving that because they realized yeah. they were missing out. But uh, <laughs> I think that might be the movie. Yeah, cool. But, yeah. Um, so um, on your many tours that you've taken so far, has anything ever unusual happened or did you have anybody of note ever take a tour or anything along those Not lines? Not yet. Okay. I wish there was like a famous person that just showed up and, you know, and they were like, yeah, we're on a tour. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, I would still be super excited, but yeah. no, that, that hasn't happened yet. But yeah, you know, yeah. fingers crossed that... No anything yeah. ever go wrong or bizarre or anything like that or not not wrong but <laughs> anything unusual ever happen along those lines the only thing wrong that happened uh one time is oh and i felt like this was just a series of unfortunate events um the first place we went to um the woman was getting up and she bumped the table and so then the glass fell on someone oh, no. and so that happened then we get to the next location and then they don't take uh they don't take cards so i have to now leave them and then scramble to find an atm to get cash oh wow and of course I get lost or turned around like, how is there no ATM in this neighborhood? And so, you know, and then running back. By the time I get back, of course, they had ordered extra things. And so now I'm trying to tell them, okay, how do I tell them this all isn't included in the two part? How do I get That's this tricky. out? And they're drunk. So, oh. like, I missed out on that part because they had got, yeah, yeah. so trying yeah. to have that conversation and be like, okay, I, I don't know how to cut my losses here or what to do. Just don't, don't write a review on this. Okay. Don't. Mm -mm. Right. Right. Should we leave your review? Mm -mm, don't. Mm -mm. Are you a trip advisor? Ah, don't worry about it. Yeah. Not, not there. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I wanted to make sure we get to your photos as well. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, let's see now. Let's see the window. Here we go. Um, let me see. 
have are you seeing this yet? No. No, not yet. Not okay. Yet. I must have to press share somewhere here. There we go. There you are. Can you see yourself now? Yeah. Yeah. There <laughs> yes. you go. I love this shot, by the way. I love your hair. Oh my gosh. Thank you. We have and when I was sending you pictures, I was like, oh, I've had all kind of hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Very versatile. Are you leading yes. a wine tour here? It looks official. You've got charts in the back. Okay. Yes. So this wasn't the wine tour itself, but this was um, me preparing for a wine tour. So this was a photo shoot I did to promote this stop on the wine tour. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And that's one of my, um, and this is actually a wine shop. And it's a wine shop that I found when I first moved here because I just happened to stumble into it because it was close to where I lived. Hmm. And um, I was scared to, you know, ask for what I wanted because language. But then I hear this woman speaking. She's like, no, well, we don't have that. Okay, well, we can do it later. I'm like, oh, she speaks English. Ah. And so I look at her. I said, madame, you speak English? She said, I'm from California. Yes. I was like, oh. <laughs> I found my people. <laughs> yes. So that ended up being my wine shop for several, well, for a few years while I lived in that neighborhood. Fantastic. Yeah, so I would go there all the time. And this one looks like you're leading a wine tour. Is this kind yes. of the format? You've got your iPad and you've got maps mm -hmm. here and I guess that's yeah. where you're instructing. And some it it depends on who the people are. This one, um, I knew one of the guys and so he messaged me before and said, Listen, you know, we want to really kind of get in depth on some things. So, you know, whatever we don't want it to necessarily just be casual, just drinking. We kind of really want to get some information, right? Um, you know, and have it a little more structured. So I pulled out the tablet and had a PowerPoint presentation. Wow. And, you know, sliding through the slides and everything like that. So, That's yeah. Terrific. And this is the place we're in the wine bar. And then there's a, uh, this is another one that the shop is in the front. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. yeah so we were getting into it there. Ah, is this a Me wine tour as well? That's also a wine tour. Yeah. yeah. And I think I, I was about to say something. Yeah. And this was a wine like tour in the summer. This was so funny because I actually thought they were going to cancel because I think it was like 102 degrees. Oh my goodness. Wow. And I was like, okay, I don't even know how this is going to play out, but this particular place has air conditioning. Oh, so wow. I you called him. I was like, yeah, the interview, I mean, the, um, we're still going to come. And they're like, oh, yeah, well, we're air conditioned. It's fine. I said, what? You are. So it was perfect. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. And cold bubbly that doesn't hurt either when it's hot. Yes. So, yes. <laughs> and that was one of the champagne alternatives that we uh, had. All right. Yes. Terrific. And where are we here? Looks like you're this in a wine cellar. Is, this is in a wine cellar. And this right. was a, a group tasting that I was doing for um, some concerts. It was a group of concerts called Afropunk. And okay. before this particular concert came to the city, they were like, well, we want to do some outreach or some other events to go along with it. So I did the wine tasting portion of it. Oh, so they did a tour. And then after the tour, they walked over to this um, cov and then I did a wine tasting for them down there. Oh, fantastic. All right. I think I have one more here. Oh, this is cute. <laughs> <laughs> what was in that bottle? It's empty now. All I can remember right now was red wine. Red and, wine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Looks like a Cabernet red wine. Glass. <laughs> yeah. And this, I do remember where I was. I was in Bulgaria. Ah, oh, okay. No, Serbia. I was in Serbia. We okay. were, um, it was a conference that I had gone to in Serbia. And then we went to, again, wine bars where I live my life. We went to a wine bar after. And I was like, oh, well, what's this? And so I poured it and I was like, oh, well, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Night's over. Where do we get the next one? <laughs> but the um, I, I I really liking the idea of wine bars as a way to explore a city, not committing yeah. just to one dinner in one place. Like whether it's a daytime tour or night, like that just sounds like fun. Whether you're being led by someone, ideally, um, or just going on your own, have a little nibble there and a little glass of wine, and just uh, get to more places. Absolutely. And especially in Europe, when they take, especially places like France and Spain and um, Italy, where they take the meal so seriously. Like if you mm -hmm. go to sit down for dinner, mm -hmm. that can be a yeah. two or three hour affair. But if you go to a wine bar, you can just, you know, get a, a small plate of food, 
um, you know, a cheese plate or a meat plate, and you can get a couple of different glasses of wine or get a bottle, right. that be it, and then you can go to another wine bar, or you can then go to dinner if you like. Um, so you have the chance to just experience different uh, things. And then also just, it's it's more casual. It's more light. Right. It's more fun. And yeah. you meet more people and you can... You do. Cut, because cut, people will turn and talk to you. Yeah. You know, they'll be like, hey, oh, they're here the English. Oh, you guys American? Oh, what you here yeah. for? You visiting? You know. Yeah. So and that's more likely great. to happen, I think, at a wine bar versus if you're at a restaurant with separate tables. A wine bar no, is more intimate, there. especially if you're Absolutely. sitting at the bar. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So do you have any wines with you today, Tanisha? I do. Okay. Um, uh, this I have, this is Ooh. a Diane. Okay. And the reason that I am a fan of this one, this is a new offering from Jack Lurton out oh. of um, Bordeaux. That's a familiar And name. I like it because it's single varietal. Oh. Um, you know, a lot, Bordeaux is a blend. Yes. But he wanted to do something a little different. And so okay. he was like, I want to have single varietals so you can taste these different grapes, yep. see what they taste like, so then you can better know what you like, how much you like of one in the blend versus another. And so, yeah. What a great idea. And is that um, a Sauvignon Blanc, did you say? or is it a This Semillon? one is a Semillon. Semillon, right. Mm -hmm. Because that's yeah, the traditional blend, those two mm -hmm. grapes. Yeah. So, yeah, um, but I have the Sauvignon Blanc too, but I'm like, I want to try the Semillon first. Oh, good, good, good. Well, uh, I'd love for, to, for, to, ugh, for you to taste it with us if you can. Is it open? It, or it's is not. It open? Oh, that's okay. <laughs> not open. No <laughs> and I meant, I was like, wait, when I sat down and started talking, you can edit. That's okay. When I sat down, I was like, oh, where's my corkscrew? I that, was ready for No this, worries. But, um, yeah. Have you tried it before? I have not tried this one before, but I have tried other ones. I've had the white blend okay. before. From and Lurton. I absolutely love it. Yeah, from Lurton. I absolutely okay. love it. And what does it uh, taste like? What 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 do you get from a Bordeaux blend? I like, like it. What? Yeah, I like it because it doesn't have... Um, it's not overly citrusy like a lot of Sauvignon Blancs can be. Like yes. the Sauvignon Blanc there is not overpowering. You're not getting a lot of the citrus or a lot of the herbs. You're getting a lot more of the stone fruit and the softness from the Simeon. Okay. And it, um, for me, it's a much better, um, not a much better blend, but it kind of works better together for me. Yeah. Um, and this is, these are from... Uh, Entre du Mer, he also has some in um, on the left bank of Bordeaux. And because of the soil, you, you get a bit of that minerality, but again, it's not over the top. Everything is like very well balanced and very not integrated. That's the word I needed. I'm That's like nice. distributed? No, yeah, but very well integrated. And uh, I love that Entre it- Where is de Mer approximately in, in Bordeaux? It's, it's between the two lakes, I think. Mm -hmm. It's French between the two, but kind of like at the bottom. So you have the left bank, Entre du Mer, and then the right bank. Oh, okay. Got it. And, and you have yeah. the other one there of his? Do you have the Sauvignon Blanc or- just I don't have it right, right here. Okay, no, that's fine. I don't have that's it fine. right, right here. Yeah, <laughs> but right. I do like that he did separate ones for it. Yeah, the that's an It's concept. a Sauvignon Blanc and then a Cabernet Sauvignon in the right. um, in the line. So, right. yeah, and what would you pair with those? Them. With this, I think I would pair. I would probably, and I'm so simple when I um, pair things with this one. I'm thinking I would keep it simple and do like um, a roasted chicken. Mm because okay. the flavors would still mesh well and you don't want a bunch of flavors in the chicken. So you don't want a lot of, uh, you don't want cream or tomato or any kind of um, citrus, you know, lemon or orange sauce or things like that. But the sure. roast chicken, if you get that skin a little crispy, yep. and mm. then um, to pair with this, that would be nice. Or cheese. I mean, okay. you really can't go wrong with the, with the cheese. Would it be a certain yeah. type of cheese? I would say I put comte with everything. A hard comte. I would do a hard one with this. So a hard comte, um, and not any of the softer gooey cheeses necessarily. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. And is there a particular wine book that stands out as being one of your favorites? I mean, I read this book once called Red, White, and Drunk All Over. Maybe you've heard this of it. This is a plant. This sounds I'm like a plant. Sure. <laughs> your, your PayPal payment is in the mail. Whatever. <laughs> Maybe you've heard of it. I'm not sure. Thank uh, you. Thank you no, for reading okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> no, a book that really, um, I really enjoy it. Not necessarily, uh, not fully about wine, but what to drink with what you eat. Oh, yes. The pairing book. Yeah. Yes. Um, I really like that. And then also just we want to talk wine, how to taste by Jancis Robinson. 
Ah, too classic. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, I really yeah, like those that are there. really helpful. Because yeah. with what to drink, with what you eat, that, I mean, you can read it if you like. Sure. But you can also just thumb through it and say, you know what? I'm drinking a uh, Simeon tonight. What yeah. goes with it? And you go to the Simeon section, and then underneath it would give you the different dishes that will pair well with it. It's a great and reference. So, yeah. Yeah. Really well done. Um, this is fantastic, Tanisha. Is there anything we haven't covered that you would like to mention? Oh, is there anything left? <laughs> we talk Paris, we talk we tours, we movies, did. wine, yeah. life, Absolutely. milk. <laughs> we talked about everything. Do without the milk. <laughs> we great. talked about everything. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, okay, so where can people find you online and your tours? Yeah, they can find me at girlmeetsglass.com okay. and on all the socials at girlmeetsglass. That's, no one's going to get that confused. That's great. Easy right. to spell, easy to remember. Girls meet class. Oh, and I should mention, thank you again for providing a copy of your book um, or your guide to wine, Paris Wine Bars. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, what's in it and uh, why we'd all want to win it or else just uh, buy it from you. Yes. So this ebook is something I actually created uh, during the pandemic because um, I had been making a list of wine bars that I really enjoyed, whether I toured them or just enjoyed going there with friends. And people would always ask me for recommendations like, hey, I'm in the seventh. Where can I go? Or, hey, I'm going to be in the 11th. Is there a place I can go? Mm -hmm. I'm like, hmm, maybe I should just make the guide. And so the name came from 75 is the department of Paris. So all of the zip codes of Paris start with 75. So okay. it's 75, then zero, blah, blah, blah. And right. it goes from one to 20. So that's why the 75. And then I was like, well, okay, 75 and the 75 is a name. And I was like, oh, do I have 75 wine bars? Huh. Actually, I did. Had really? way more than 75, but could not fit them in the guide because, you know, there's that. So listed them all in the guide with um, their socials, their hours, but those are loose because again, they do what they want here. Um, <laughs> so the hours are in there. But just to let people know, it's broken down by arrondissement, which is the different neighborhoods of the city. Okay. And so if you're like, oh, well, my hotel's in the second arrondissement. Okay, well, what wine bar can I go to? And I'm doing like this. You don't look through it because it's not paper. It's an ebook, So you just scroll up. Sure. And then you get to the second. And so then you, you could have that on it. your smartphone as you're wandering around the city. or Absolutely. Ahead. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Oh, that sounds like a great guide. I, I definitely want to get one of those. So. And then also with some cool pictures of some of the wine bars and then also just of Paris in general. So if you're nice. just missing the city or if you've never been, um, it's something to look at and, you know, kind of highlight and check some things off like i want to go here and here and here that's great Perfect. what a great resource good for you for creating it tanisha thank you well thank you so much this has been a great discussion um i am what so jazzed about visiting paris again and connecting with you in person i would love to go on yes. one of your tours so um i'm here I'm when you're ready it. all right Excellent. I'm putting it on my bucket list, my spittoon list. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. So I will say goodbye for now, but I look forward to chatting with you again, Tanisha. All right. Thank you okay. so much. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.